Now, there's a practical you can do to investigate terminal velocity, and often these cup cases are used because you can measure the diameter really well. They come in different sizes, and then they basically uh, they fall quite nicely. And what you can do is you can look at their motion, perhaps as they're falling through air. But in this video, I'm going to, you know, it's a very similar experiment, but this time we're going to look at an object which is falling through a fluid. Now, what I have here is just a glass measuring cylinder. Um, and yeah, depending on the setup at your school, you might have different sized tubes. I find glass is quite nice because it's very easy to see what's inside. If you have a plastic uh, tube, it's often a bit harder to actually see what's on the inside. So I've just got a glass tube here. And inside this, I'm going to put a viscous liquid. Now, the one that I'm using here um, is bubble bath. Now, the reason for that is that you can do it with things like... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, stuff like uh, wallpaper paste or glycerol, but these are quite messy to clean up. The advantage of something like this is that it not only smells nice, but it's actually quite easy to sort of clean up afterwards. This one here happens to be blue, but it does mean that you can still see what's on the inside. Now, if you do it properly, um, you'll notice that actually there's quite a few air bubbles in here. You can just about see that. So if you're going to do it properly, you need to kind of pour the stuff in really, really gently, and then often you leave it a while to settle. But you can see at the moment, uh, we're actually looking effectively at the, I guess these things here are travelling at terminal velocity but upwards. Uh, and over, over time, you know, a few, you know, half an hour or something, all these bubbles will settle out. Now, this practical, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dropping a ball bearing. Okay, so I've just got a very small ball bearing here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dropping this ball bearing through the liquid. And what you can see now is that it starts to move. Uh, and I guess the challenge really is how we actually record the velocity of this ball at different times. So um, what you need for that is pretty straightforward equipment. You need some kind of stopwatch and also you need a ruler. Now there are different ways you can actually measure this terminal velocity. Uh, one of the ways I've seen suggested is you have rubber bands on the outside of the tube. And what you do is you move the rubber bands till there's the same time interval uh, for the ball passing between each one. But I, I think that's, I found that quite tricky to do. So the, the way that I'm going to do here is I'm going to film it. And this is something that you can do in the lab using often your mobile phone. So I've set up my ruler, which is just held in a retort stand to the side. And what I can do is make sure then that if that's held vertically, we can actually measure distance. And if you kind of analyse the video, you can see the distance travelled quite nicely. I've got a stopwatch here, which I can set running. And again, you don't need to kind of start it on zero. What we're looking at is effectively the elapsed time. Now, I dropped the ball bearing into this liquid, so how do I get it out? You know, there's no point trying to tip up all the liquid, but what you can use is a small magnet. So here I just have a neodymium magnet. If I hold it near the side of the, mag uh, of the, the ball bearing, what I can then do is I can bring the ball bearing up the side of the tube. Now, something that you might want to do to kind of improve this is think about how you release that ball bearing. If you just release it by pulling it away from the side, what you find is that even though this is falling at the moment, it's quite slow due to the edge effects. The fact that it's basically kind of running down the side of the tube. So it might be that you take some uh, forceps or tweezers and you use that to maybe drop the ball from the very centre in the middle. But the point is, what you're going to do is you're going to release this ball somehow from the top as much in the centre of the tube as possible. Uh, you can set the timer running. And what you can now do is you can record, as time goes on, the distance travelled. If you've done all of that, that then allows you to work out the velocity at different times. So for this experiment, what you might be doing is looking at the time. You maybe look at the, the distance travel or the displacement uh, down vertically. And from this, you can then work out the velocity at different times. Again, making sure that you do your repeat readings and all the kind of good stuff. What you can then do is you can somehow plot a velocity time graph. And theory suggests that you get, should get something a bit like this. You have this initial period of acceleration, and then we get to the terminal velocity, okay? And what you might find is that, you know, depending on the kind of data, some of your data points may be above and below this, but the more data points that you can take, the better that this line's going to be. And you've got to think about why that is. As this is moving down, the ball bearing's actually moving down through this liquid, what we have is we have balance forces. The weight force acting down is balanced by the drag force and also the upthrust provided by this fluid. And it's at that point when there's no resultant force that travels at this constant velocity. Obviously, depending on the stuff you have at your school, there's so many different variations you can do. And again, you still might be using a bun case and you can do the same thing. Uh, you could always film this bun case falling through the air and that's quite a nice straightforward one to do. 
You can also investigate things like different sizes of ball bearings. You can look at different uh, fluids as well. And actually, then you can actually measure something called the viscosity, which is effectively how sticky this fluid is, how much it kind of is how much sort of drag it actually provides for that falling object. And I've got another video that talks all about this viscosity and how you can find out the viscosity for the ball bearing that you've maybe just dropped through that fluid.